My name is Dave Curry. I am a sales application engineer for Intrepid, and uh, I'll be talking about media converters for automotive Ethernet. Uh, specifically, uh, media converters in this field um, uh, are kind of a new thing just because Ethernet inside the vehicle is more of a new thing, right? Um, automotive Ethernet itself kind of represents um, the latest in automotive networking technology that we're currently dealing with. How many people here already have touched Ethernet in their current job relation? Right? So a lot of you, if you haven't, you eventually will. Uh, it's not going away. It's not going to not be here for a while. It's, everybody's going to touch this. So um, all OEMs, suppliers, because of that, uh, are all going to be using automotive Ethernet. Um, so that in itself, uh, we'll lend some problems and some solutions, of course. Um, specifically, um, the connections in between all the stuff that you're going to use inside the vehicle now. Um, when we talk about automotive Ethernet, there's going to be lots of hardware that's going to go inside the vehicle. Um, we kind of talked a little bit, Dave did a little bit just previously, um, even LiDAR, right? LiDAR is a standard Ethernet connection. Uh, uh, can be, okay, and uh, to adapt that to a vehicle network architecture like automotive Ethernet is a completely different physical connection, okay. Um, so that's literally where uh, automotive Ethernet or media converters specifically come into play. Um, when you're testing for automotive Ethernet or you're testing using tools, there's no one place to plug in to get all of this data, right. So you're going to have to tap in between individual systems or even on the bench, you'll need this stuff um, to interface with existing architecture or new architecture or anything that's coming in and out of the vehicle. So um, because of that, uh, you have to have different tools in order to adapt to the signaling and the cabling that's in the vehicle and as well as off-the-shelf things that come into the vehicle that you're going to be using or, or figuring out basically because we're an engineering tool company, right? Um, so, so to put it simply, if you need to connect any automotive Ethernet tool, okay, inside a vehicle, and you're going to use anything else that's not that specific connector or medium type, you're going to need a media converter for that connection. You're going to need something in between that gives you automotive Ethernet on one side and maybe standard tent 100, uh, 1 gigabit connection on the other side, okay? Uh, generally, the first step to being using automotive Ethernet is using a media converter because it's a very simple device, or can be a very simple device that just has those two physical connections tied together, okay? Um, there's lots of other things that can go in, as I'll eventually explain with some of our tools that we have here, um, and processes that can be run on that data and stored, but there's all kinds of cool things that we can do now. So uh, the Rad Moon is one of our initial devices that came out a few years ago. Um, Oh, thousands and thousands. I think tens of thousands of these were sold uh, everywhere. So um, we have a bunch, obviously, out in the demo area now. But uh, this is going to be a 1000 base T1, which is automotive Ethernet, right? Connected to a 10100 RJ45 Ethernet connector, just standard NIC that's on your actual laptop. This will allow you to connect their interface to automotive Ethernet. And on the other side is literally an RJ45 connector for your 10100 standard Ethernet connector that you would use in your house, right? So this can be brought into a, uh, an actual computer and visualize this data, of course, hopefully using Vehicle Spy. So whenever data is received on, on one side of the connection, it's automatically sent out on the other connection, right? It's just this media converter, this piece of hardware that sits in between, um, pushing that data from one side to the other, from one connection type to the other connection type. You know, it's converting that media. Um, it's all done full duplex, right, uh, so that data can uh, be sent in both directions simultaneously, okay. Uh, and uh, the Rad Moon specifically is a simple device. I call it a dumb device because it's literally just two phi's tied directly together um, looking at that data. As Dave did mention previously, he actually had one of the slides that I, one of the pictures that I'm also using here is about the Rad Moon Duo. So the Rad Moon Duo doesn't give you just one option of one connection on one side 
and the output on the other side on a different physical connector. The Rad Moon Duo gives you two to two, right? So you can have two existing standard Ethernet connections, like two LiDARs, on one side, and on the other side, outputting automotive Ethernet connection. So you can then bring that into any other type of logger that you have, or any other system, and it goes in both directions. Okay. Um, the Rad Moon Duo also brings in a few more things um, than the Rad Moon originally did, right? The Rad Moon Duo is supposed it has access to uh, the FIs, so you can configure the FIs for manual, for slave, or auto. Okay, those are all manually configurable if you want now. The Rad Moon Duo also has what we call Core Mini scripting capability, so you can write scripts, basically vehicle spy scripts, function blocks that run in the device. Okay, without the PC attached. And of course, we all know it's more powerful because it has a lot more LEDs than the previous one. Right? If you've seen any of our hardware, you've been a customer of ours for a while, you know, we started off with two LEDs, now we have one billion. So obviously, it's much more powerful than the previous version. Um, it's actually super useful, of course, because you can get link status and stuff like that. Um, from those devices uh, so you can tell on what's going on with the device without actually looking at the vehicle data and looking at it post-analysis for some reason. So we do have the Rad Moon Duo in one of the options in the 1000 base T media converter section out there. So we do have a demo and we have a loose device around a non-functional device, so no need to put it in your pocket and make it disappear. It is non-functional. Uh, but we are offering this as a, as a new product very shortly also. And as I mentioned here, we have we saw this version or this uh, a little bit earlier, right? So we've got two lidars, which are a thousand base TX or a hundred base TX, sorry, um, and then that's converting into automotive Ethernet a thousand hundred base T1, right? You have all these acronyms now to learn too, because we're talking about Ethernet, right? If I was talking about AVB, I'd be drying the mouth already with all the protocols and AVDEC and all this other stuff that we'd have to talk about, but. So 100 base T1 is automotive Ethernet. 100 base TX is basically your standard four-wire Ethernet. The Rad Moon 2. So we talked about the Rad Moon. We talked about the Rad Moon Duo. The Rad Moon 2 is a new device from Intrepid that is going to not really replace the Rad Moon because this is dealing with a different Phi. So we're dealing with 100 base and also 1,000 base automotive Ethernet, so 1,000 base T1. Um, the device uses the, the Marvel Phi's, uh, which gives us a programmable membrane and we actually can get Phi link and network status. Uh, you'll notice on the side of the device, maybe not specifically in this picture, but if you, t you can see here, um, there and out on all the demos, you actually have a link state that is available. Okay, so you have it's called an SQI index and the bit error rate, okay, there's specific numbers that correlate to how good that connection is. Um, it's, it's kind of magic that we're getting uh, all this data in a thousand, in a gigabit type of interface with, you know, one pair of twisted without any shielding, right? So we have a lot of data going back and forth on those wires. Um, and when you put more and more data on those lines, you need to have some type of visual information. And of course, it gives us an option to use more LEDs, which we're obviously totally for, to show you that link state. So you can have um, a 1,000 base media converter with the Rad Moon 2. You can have a 100 base T1 media converter with the Rad Moon 2. Um, you can manually configure those files. You have link status uh, based on the SQI index uh, and LEDs on the side. And I'll get into that a little bit more on the next piece of product that I talk about, which is the Rad Supermoon. Um, but the Rad Moon 2 uh, is a very powerful media converter. The Rad Supermoon has a lot of the same, carries o carry, carry over a lot of the same functions that the Rad Moon does, okay, and the Rad Supermoon. Um, it being either 100 base or 1000 base T1 converter. Um, also carries over that SQI indicator LEDs that are on the side, okay? Um, but it also allows you uh, to do a few different things. Um, of course, we can do that phi register and do stuff like that. 
Uh, it also has a USB 3 uh, Gen 1 port, so if you don't have, same with the Red Moon 2, if you don't have an Ethernet port on your laptop anymore, like a lot of us do not, right? Um, you can have the high-speed USB link uh, to ag aggregate that data to you. So one thing that the Supermoon does that the Red Moon does not do, the Red Moon 2, is that if you use more than one, it has a specific state or mode that you can put it into to use it as an active tap. So active taps is the next presentation after this one, so I'm not going to get too much into it to steal that thunder. Um, but if you're looking at uh, tapping that information, tapping traffic that's being full duplex communication between two ECUs and pulling that data out, um, it's an important thing to have uh, a tap sitting in between pulling that data into your uh, analyzer or vehicle spy or logger to record that data. So the Rad Supermoon has this capability, the Rad Moon 2 does not. So here's another useful application, right? Using Rad Supermoons to connect a 100 base T1 switch to a 1000 base T1 ECU, right? Using those, using it as a tap function or as a media converter functions here, we can make this happen. Um, we know the link states, we know how good that connection is between each. Um, with the Rad Supermoon, you can also uh, use it as a, uh, it has a, has a buffer built inside too, so if you're going the opposite way from like a thousand base to a hundred base, um, it has an internal buffer that will allow you to have some traffic play catch up for the most part. Um, not a lot, but it does offer that as a function um, of the Supermoon that the Rad Moon 2 does not have. Okay. Here's the specific rates for the SQI index. This is a better picture of where the LEDs can come in and the link states to show the signal strength of the device, right? As I mentioned before, the, it does have buffered media conversion. It also has, eventually, it's something that's coming soon, it's not finished yet, but it has what's called a low latency active tap. So as this device is looking at that information, before it caps and capulates or gets that whole frame, it's going to start forwarding that information before that whole frame is received. That's called cut-through mode. That is something that's going to be available on this Red Supermoon. Also another thing that's not available on the Red Moon 2. Some other media converters that we have um, are included with those switches that we talked about. Um, actually, uh, the device, the gem car that's out there right now that has all those uh, radars on it has a red uh, Jupiter connected to it. This is the red Jupiter's little brother. Okay, this is something that's going to that's a hundred base T1 uh, automotive Ethernet switch. Okay, the red Jupiter is a thousand base version of the red Pluto with a few extra options. Okay, so you'll see the red Pluto, the red Jupiter out there connected to that car on the side that has all those continental uh, radar ECUs that are all uh, automotive T1. So those are auto, all 100 base T1 continental radars that are on that car outside. Uh, there are, I think, four specific radars specifically connected to it at the present moment because they didn't fire in the last two. Because we already had it in spot and we said, nah, screw it. So, but the Red Jupiter, uh, and you'll learn a little bit more about this too from John Simon when he starts talking about this. But uh, basically this is, you know, our Ethernet switches are going to be able to be media converters as well uh, as it's inherent there. Right now, yes. <laughs> as technology grows, right? As soon, well, as, as Dave was saying, right? So as soon as we get something that we like and that works, we're already asking for something ten times faster. Oh, great! This is great. This is more than I ever thought. Can I have something that's ten times faster? So that's basically where it is, right? As the technology grows, right? Everyone initially wanted Ethernet in the car. It came in as soon as it was in the car. They said, oh, "What about gigabit?" As soon as gigabit was in here, they're saying, what about 10G? So right now, 100 base T1 is the starting point where everyone is engineering and working off of and has things going. 1000 base T1 is the one that's going to be above that, right? That's the next gen of media converters. Generally, when you're planning out something like this, and especially in a vehicle environment, it's not something that's ready 
right away, right? Engineering takes time. So in that engineering time, people have said, you know what, I want something that does 100 base T1, but I'm probably going to need at least a 1,000 base T1 port also by the time we're done with this. So that's generally where it moves, and that's why. So it's more popular right now. Is it going to be more popular next year? Way more popular 1,000 base T most likely next year. Nobody says, I need no more data, please. So, uh, so yeah, and, and because, you know, Intrepid, we manufacture all of our own hardware and write our own software all here, right? Uh, we're at the bleeding edge. We're always doing stuff as soon as we get it, specifically with the Rad Supermoon, and Marvell just completed their FIs. We're actually getting those. We had beta FIs before that we're selling and then upgrading for customers. So it's a big, it's a, always an improvement thing, especially here especially in the automotive world. And media converters aren't that exciting, but I did fill some time spots with it. Are there any questions for, uh, for me about media converters?